I hope you're still listening. So, my name is Alan. I'm from Green Amazon. So, we're a company which is focusing on human performance. So, that means we do courses such as soft skills or leadership courses, communication, safety, culture, safety, uh, behavioral courses. Okay. So, my topic is about what drives human performance. Now, in the last eight years, we have collected data from 50,000 seafarers or respondents. Uh, we have also interviewed 2,000 seafarers, 500 officers, staff, and interviews, and we have conducted more than 100 human performance surveys with different companies in the environment industry. So, the takeaway here is that I would like to share with you. What are the key principles that we learn from it? And what are the recommendations on how to improve human performance in the maritime industry? Now, traditionally, we have the perception that as we gain experience, performance should improve, right? So the more experience that we have, the better that we should perform. Well, what I would say is this, one of the things that we have somehow um, observed or we believe is that performance is context dependent. How is that? So imagine if you're going to hire a chief officer from another company, right? So you review his experience. So let's say he has 10 years of experience as chief officer and based on his training, and say that he's competent, right? So that should be your expectation when he goes on board your vessel, he should perform well. Now that's not always the case, isn't it? We know that because that chief officer will deal with different type of people or individuals, how he can collaborate, how he can communicate with other people, and it also depends on the resources that we have in order to perform well. Do you agree? So, his experience does not always equate to good performance. It depends on the different factors that are available. So, let's say another one is... Let's say, I remember when I was still uh, maybe 1997, I have been promoted, recommended by a captain, and said he'll be promoted as the officer. However, they had to send me home to take a GNSS course. So the problem was, I was promoted, but I was, I was sent to a different ship. Therefore, my performance, you don't expect my performance to be that good because on that vessel, I was expected to do a second officer's job, which is not a normal thing at that time. Okay, so new positions, so if ever, for example, I've been good in my previous vessel, in that particular type of vessel, you don't expect me to have the same performance when I'm, what, transferred to another vessel and dealing with different type of people or teams. Get my point? So the same is true with people who has been hired and transferred to another company. Don't expect people, even though they have great experience, they have good training and they come from reputable companies that they will perform the moment you put them on one particular vessel. Why? Because the culture of that vessel may not support that person. His ability to deal with the new set of crew cannot be the same, so expectations can be different when it comes to performance. So, as you expose people to different teams or individuals, performance can also be affected. Right? So we need to build a support system on board, a culture that will support a particular person's performance. Okay, so this is what we call the experience versus experience. Performance is always linked to complex and decided at work. And therefore, low performance is not necessarily the fault of the individual. Are we providing them the right training, right support, or good team? 
Second, we have also what we call performance is beyond the individual. We call this the gambling rule. Within our organizations, we can have intelligent, smart people, right? But still, we have dysfunctional things in our organizations. Have you realized that? You can hire from loudness, people from the academies, they perform individually. They are the best. But when you put them into a group of people, sometimes you don't perform well. So it's no guarantee that you hire individual performers that they will also perform within the group. You get my point? So, another thing that I would like to highlight here is this one, collective intelligence and performance. So, it's very important for the leadership or the organization to develop a culture wherein there is open and trusted culture. First, I would like to um, explain a little bit about the task of reflectivity, degree of task of re reflectivity. What does it mean? It means that if the team focuses on how they deal with their work, let's say they always try to review the tasks that they have done, what are in the areas that they need to improve or what went well, how they can further improve it. So that means the higher the degree of task reflectivity, people are more aware and they're talking about how to improve their task of performance. Okay? On the other hand, we have the psychological safety. What do you mean by psychological safety? It simply means the relationship is good when the psychological safety is high. We've been talking about what? Soft skills? That means that if the team or organization has a high level of psychological safety, the crew are not afraid to speak up. Leaders listen. That means they're not afraid of disagreeing, stopping the candidate, or they share their ideas or experiences. If they have a low psychological safety, that means they have poor relationship and they have a toxic environment. That means they have toxic leaders, right? Okay, so there are four types of, of teams or organizations based on collective intelligence. It's functional. It means teams or organizations, they don't care about their performance with us. They don't talk about it and they have a toxic environment. Second, we have what we call the cold teams and organizations. Yes, they do the briefing on how they did the job, what went well, what went wrong. However, they don't simply care about their colleagues. They have a low what, level of relationship or interpersonal skills is not evident. The same is true when we have laid back. Yes, maybe they have a so good social environment. Uh, however, they don't care about their tasks. They don't focus on how to further their job. Now, what I would like to highlight here is what we call the high-performing team. So you can see here, in this type of team or crew on board, they focus on their tasks. They try to evaluate what went wrong and what went well. And at the same time, people, they created an environment where communication is very open. People are not afraid to speak up. They listen to each other. Leaders listen to the feedback and suggestions of the event. Therefore, relationship is flourishing. So that should be our end of mind. So we need leaders who can create an open and trusting culture. Soft skills, relationship, communication. So we need leaders, not only managers. If you look at this, from the leader's perspective, the task effectivity is more of management, right? Social effectivity or psychological safety, it deals about people, leadership. So there should be a good balance between these two. Now, Sharing to you the data that we have collected 
from the 320 vessels that we have been monitoring and it shows there to make it simply that the moment people feel that they are not appreciated they're not being listened to by their leaders that means it's, if relationship is very poor, poor people stop talking about performance so our ability to take care of each other can also affect our performance so if you're if the crew are afraid of their leaders they may not be willing to share their ideas right so that's the, the, the thing that we have realized here if we focus on one of the companies that we have been following for the last five years actually they are good performers is that you see they have invested into developing their psychological safety leaders are trained to listen give feedback that is leadership building relationship communication etc and at the same time they are also been focusing on courses about performance as you can see here their safety culture is very high as well as the, the regular LTI and other safety performance parameters. Okay, and finally, one thing that I would like to share is based on the 50,000 respondents and the data that we have, what we normally do is that they have a safety, we call it safety delta. So it's a way to review the safety culture once in a while. And when they receive the results, we try to identify the areas that they are good at and the areas that they can improve. Usually what happens is that when we raise awareness on the areas that they need to focus on or improve, thereafter, when we do another survey, usually there is a significant improvement on the areas that has been focused. So therefore, so we, when we help seafarers and officers direct their attention towards different performance levels and help them understand what they need to discuss, it leads to performance improvement. And finally, performance reviews drive human performance. We need to constantly review our performance, but to ensure valuable performance reviews, we need psychological safety. How are we going to do that? We need leaders, not only managers. We need officers who care about their men. They have what we call soft skills, not only technical skills, but they know how to take care, they know how to listen. Therefore, they should create an environment where everyone is encouraged to speak up and not afraid. And this is a continuous goal. It never stops. Thank you.